You know, we live right here. That's why I'm here, okay? We're, it, it, when you look at all the different factors, right, we're one of the safest places to live. All right. And, uh, I, you know, Henderson, Nevada? <laughs> what was that? No, I, okay, yes, yeah, sorry. That's what you said, huh? Yeah. Henderson, ne Nevada. Okay? Now, I, I, I don't know how they, they rate themselves as number two in the country. I've been there. I, you know, I've spent a bunch of time there, okay, in Anderson. But, and Santa Ana? You've got to be kidding me. I would have think this the other way. It should be one of the highest crime rates in the United States. Never been there. Okay, but we're good. All right. Um, RAD, that's a rape, a rape aggression defense training. Uh, we, we got a guy here locally in town. You took the class? All right. So we have... So we have, we have a guy here in town that gives that class, and local law enforcement does too. And it's only for women, okay? No guys get to go. I know, sorry. But this is where women, females, are taught how to respond to an aggressor, okay? And to protect themselves. Anybody know, what's the percentage of women in the United States that have been raped? And over their lifetime, what's the percent? Anybody know? Yeah, about 25%, all right? So just to give you a horror story, okay? And she's not here, or I wouldn't, because she would get embarrassed if I told you. Not because you know, but anyway. So my wife has been raped. Her mother was raped and almost was almost murdered. Her grandmother was raped and almost murdered. Uh, has pl a plate in her head from you know was raped in a drug into a construction site and raped. So if you're, I just strongly suggest you you know. So that well, that's one of the reasons I'm really cautious. Especially I got daughters, so. You know, and my girls could kick most people's ass, yes. And uh, anyway, so they're all firearm trained too. But so Are if you you're familiar with the RAD training, then? Yeah. Are you familiar with target focus training? Yes. And what do you think? Well, it, it, I would start with me. If, it was, if I was a female, I would take RAD and then go from there to see what, what I could do to, to augment it. You know, for example, like maybe even take a couple of Krav Maga classes. But that's a good point. And, and, and again, it's a good place to start. Speaking of starting and, and martial arts, anybody interested in a knife fighting or knife defense class? Come on. Okay. Be, okay. So, so there's a, one of my friends is an instructor down in Vegas. He's world-renowned knife fighter. Uh, and uh, um, he's, he's done classes for me before. And it's really... Really, what I want you to focus on is focus on is the knife defense part of it. Okay, somebody attacks you with a knife, you know how to how to survive it. But in order to survive it, in some cases you might have to fight back and yada yada. But so if we're interested and there's enough people interested, then we can we'll bring them up and and, and do a knife fighting class. It wouldn't be in here either. We need room and and uh, I'm going to sit back and watch. Cause that's always fun. Okay, so we have passive countermeasures and active countermeasures. Passive countermeasures, that's where that thing's going to take care of itself. Okay, the light's got to turn on because of the motion detector. Active countermeasures, that's where you have to do something. Okay? And, uh, yeah, I love this guy. I had to throw him in there. <laughs> that's passive, okay? So that when you come up my driveway and you see the gnarly zombie tr uh, gnome... And you're going to think, damn, Scott's a weird guy. I don't want to go there. Right. Keep going. Okay. Don't come down my driveway. All right. So passive and active. So passive, you know, strengthening that door. And this is, this is the elements of the kit that we, that we were demonstrating earlier. All right. I, I swear by this thing. I really like it. Um, and this is a pin for sliding glass doors. If you have sliding glass doors, that's probably the weakest point in, in your in your in your home all right so there's several things that we can do about sliding glass doors garage doors and uh, so if I'm outside the house what I want to do and we see I see this all the time this is a big thing in uh, young males driving around neighborhoods and see nobody's home one guy gets out runs up to the house snakes the uh, coat hanger up through the door to pull the emergency handle, right? And then all he's got to do is lift the garage door and he's in, okay? It's, and if you have a, an attached garage, you know, that's one of the preferred methods to get into a home. All right, so 
there's a couple of things you can do about it. But one of the things is these large snap links um, on the track itself, uh, on the track, okay, is I, I put one on each side. There's cutouts in the track, right? And I right above the wheel, the, the bottom bogey wheel, I put one on each side. And I don't care if you got a forklift, you'll wreck the garage before you get that door up, okay? So when I leave the property, and I'm gonna, I know I'm going to be gone for a couple of hours, I, I use those snap links. Oh, and CJ Buffer, by the way. CJ Buffer, that's the entity that pr that's providing us the, the film, all right? The, um, the ballistic window film. Uh, something else to do in the house, believe it or not. You know, my mom did this and years ago when I was a little kid, and I didn't know why she did it, but she would put bells on every door in the house, right? And she thought, I like the sound of bells. No. It's to keep that little smart-ass 14-year-old boy from sneaking out of the house. You open the door and she can hear the bell, okay? It's mom, it's mom radar, all right? So that's something else. It's just a real easy fix. You just put a couple of bells on the doors, all right? Here's the floor safe I'm talking about. There's a, there's a security screen. It looks just like a regular insect screen, but it's a, it's a stainless steel and it's a little bit thicker grade. That is, and there's, this is just a shot out of a, out of a video. But this guy goes after that screen with a crowbar and then a uh, um, sledgehammer and then an ax, okay? So you can have that stuff on the outside. Again, we talk about layers, right? And this is what I, I'm, I haven't installed those yet, but I'm going to. Uh, I want you know, I want that on the outside, then privacy film, and then on the inside, the ballistic film, the layers, right? And the other thing that I like about it is, so you throw a Molotov, if the looters show up at my place and they throw a Molotov cocktail at my house and it breaks here on that screen, it doesn't break the window and get into the house, right? I'd much rather have that outside. And we'll talk about fireproofing too in a minute. All right. And then this over here is the smaller ballistic shelter that Mark is retailing. This thing will stop a 50 caliber bullet, okay? And obviously there's a, there's a very strong secure door, but it's, it's open for the, at the moment. So there's, there's, a store, there's benches inside. There's, there's, there's sufficient to store you know, some food, some water, some, some air tanks, you know, whatever it is you want. But uh, if it was up to me, we would have one of those in every classroom, and that's, you can see it's in a classroom in the United States. So if there's a school shooting, the kids have a place to go. Earthquakes, tornadoes as well. Yeah. Three-story building could fall on that and then still survive. Yeah, so if you live in Arkansas, right, you should have one of these, okay? All right. What's the cost of that? It's about 18. 18 uh, for the small for unit for residential, it'd be around in the 18 mark, but it's totally customizable. You can go smaller, go larger. We actually have a newer version under development that is can be as low as six thousand dollars. Yeah, so they have the classroom size is like you know is about 18, and then the smaller one is a little is less than half that, you know, family sized. Double wall metal, uh, two by six uh, metal beams. It is extremely well built. Think of an armored car, and then with you know uh, a special proprietary material in the walls. Six besides inch, that, yeah, six inch steel I beams and everything going across the top. In, in fact, uh, it, it, he Mark wanted to have it here today to show you, but um, I it, think it still may be coming. It might be coming. That'd be great. And if it doesn't, then. Um, you know, we'll have it. We'll we'll have it at one of our presentations. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I want one. All right. I know. Anybody in here ever own a uh, a mastiff? By the way. Yeah. I did, but I went broke trying to feed it. Yeah. Yeah. When we had, I was going through five hundred pounds of dry a month. So. Yeah. Don't step in it. Okay. So active countermeasures, you know, we were talking about passive ones before where we don't have to necessarily do anything. Okay, now we're gonna talk about active things. You know, night vision, you know, if you're anal retentive like me, and I'm paranoid, but am I paranoid enough? Okay, 
Yeah, I, you know, I like having night vision, all right? In the military, we say he who owns the night owns the battlefield, right? So, um, so these are, and, and you should have a quality, a good, and make sure it's a, uh, um, it's not expired fire extinguisher or two or three in your home. Several, yes. One in the garage, one in the kitchen, that's the absolute minimum. And I also keep one in my car, in each, actually in each of the cars. And really what we're talking about is so that we can get to where you know, we, we as a community, we, that we're better equipped, that we're, this, we're safer for so many reasons, okay? So if something bad happens, that so we're here to help each other. So Neighborhood Watch, if you're interested in that, talk to the Sheriff's Department, depending on where you live, Sheriff's Department, Police Department. And then again, you can ask for a home visit. They will come out and do an assessment for free, okay? All right. Avail yourselves of the resources. Also, that CERT training, great, great, uh, yeah, you, he, yeah. Uh, um, great uh, introduction and a great uh, brush up if you already had some exposure to that stuff. All right, so now we're going to switch into the non-lethals, okay? We talked about, we talked about this, the spray, talked about the light, and, and, on, and I, I was demonstrating it, you know, the light a few minutes ago. I, it's, it's the one that I carry myself. My wife's got one, my kid have one, and I have about eight backups too. Uh, tasers, you know, there's pluses and minuses about them, okay? Uh, you know, some places they're regulated just like a firearm. Out here, we're okay, okay? But if you're in Philadelphia, if you're in New York, no, okay? So you need to, you need to understand the local regulations. A bat or a baton, I don't want anybody to get that close to me, okay? Uh, this thing, you know, the semi-automatic, you know, I, I, when I saw that, that, that was pretty funny. You know, it's my my wife actually made me have me make her a mace ball bat, and I'll show you that in a second. She she likes it, and oh, yeah. So this is a salt gun. Instead of shooting bullets, it shoots rock hard salt pellets. And for, you know, CO it's CO two pistol. So if you don't want to kill anybody, well, think about one of those maybe. Okay, you know, one of those, two of those in the face, and. That ought to deter them. They, don't, they probably aren't going to know that. They'll probably think they were shot. Okay. But, uh, and then door jammers. There's different kinds. There's, um, there's one that I really like that we, we've got them on order. It's a wedge that it, uh, also has an alarm in it. Okay. So if you open the door, your front door, you open the door, it's going to be on the floor, right? Next to your foot. So if they push the door open, they are not getting in. Even if so, if, even if you open the door, they're not getting in. And if they push against it, the alarm goes off. All right, that's one. That's the primary purpose of this thing. And then when I travel, I always have one. And I keep. It's actually I keep it in my shaving kit. Um, that's when I have dead, so I got to get a new one. But uh, normally, I, you know, I have it in my shaving kit, and I put it next to the front door, uh, to the hotel room. So if somebody opens the door, a they don't get the door open, and b you know, if they open it, 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 it'll, it sounds an alarm and deters them. Okay, so those. And I show, I, we talked about the laser. And then something else, too. All right, practice. Use these things. What, what's your name? Michelle. Michelle. All right, so Michelle was asked a while ago, you know, she, she wants to get, you know, her hands dirty. She wants to do things. So don't be shy. Okay, come play with these things. All right. So, just for example, in the um, in in uh, Mark's survival kits, right? That, I I I think it's genius. You know, it's, it's they, they've got these jars already organized for you with all the goodies inside. Okay, you can you know start a fire, or whatever you know. But there's so there's different sets that go in the go in the that's medical, but they go into the bug out bags. You don't have to think about it. You know, and it's labeled and. It's dry, okay, it keeps the contents dry. It's marked. I can also use this as a storage container. I mean, you know, it's just well thought out. So there's, there's a lot of things that I like about it. So you get your hands dirty, okay. And so practice with this stuff is the point. Exactly. Yes, Mike. And you mentioned layers, so that not only do you have to have, uh, be prepared in your household, but in your car and your, your kid away at college, everybody, every layer needs to be prepared. Yeah, so. That's a good point. So I have a thing that, you know, that's typically called an EDC or everyday carry. What do you have on you? All the time. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's why I wear cargo pants, you know, but because I have things that are readily available. 
that's my everyday carry. I have stuff in the car. Uh, uh, that's my get home bag. The stuff in the car so that if all if the world goes to pot, I can get in the car and I can get home safely. And then at home we have bug out bags. You know, I'm not planning on leaving my place. Okay, I think I can defend it from any. I know I can. I can defend it against anything less than an Apache helicopter. Okay, seriously. Anything less than an Apache helicopter, and you're not getting me off my ground, okay? But if I have to go, I have a plan. And in fact, I have you know bug out bags that are labeled. You know, we have different ones for different seasons. Like I have a winter bag for me and the kid and the wife. I have a dog bag and yada yada. And we have a whole class that's just on <sighs> deciding whether to bug or you know, am I staying home? Am I going to shelter in place or am I going to bug out? And those all about how to make that decisions. And if I do bug out, what should I take with me? Where am I going? But that's you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that process. And so that's a, a whole different class. But no matter what you decide to do, and it's probably going to be a combination of non-lethal and lethal, you need to practice. Okay, the hands-on. All right. So practice. I did say that, right? Okay. And, you know, if there's enough interest, we'll provide a place for you to come out and practice. So front door. Again, you know, this is that the, the weak chink in the armor, so to speak. So what do we want to do? So this is the, the door wedge that I talked about. You know, I like those. This is the, this is the uh, doorbell. That's, that's the uh, ring. That's that product. And uh, where it's got the camera built in and it runs off the electricity in your home. What I don't like about this model is runs off the electricity in your home. Okay, but they do have one that I can put out there at my gate that's solar powered, that's got the camera, and it's got the voice. Like, what do you want? You know, okay? Because if it's not anybody I know, you know, I, if it's the UPS guy, hey, thanks, leave it at the gate, I'll come get it in a minute. Okay, but uh, anyway, you get the idea. And this is a a dowel rod going into a, a, your sliding glass door track, which isn't the best, but it's it's a start. It's something versus you know somebody. It, these doors are so easily kicked in. You know, my 98 pound, 22 year old stepson can do it. All right, neighborhood watch. Sign up for it. Get to know your neighbors. Right, you're not because you're Snoopy, but you know because we we're, think of us. You know, we're, think of us as links in a chain. Right signage and depending if, if you own the property if you're leasing if you live in an apartment that's going to vary but you can still put a guard dog sign in the window in your apartment you don't have a guard dog but uh you know they don't know that and but you know as long as you don't firm, uh, permanently affix it you should be okay and then this is oops sorry this is one of my favorite things in the whole world so it's a motion sensor the, you know, it just goes on any lamp or any any other fixture, right? You walk in the room, and actually, um, they don't show you, but the better ones have a proximity thing on the back where you can set it, say one, two, or three. Okay, so as I walk in the room, the light comes on automatically. Okay, and that's real handy to put on the porch. So if you don't have a motion detecting alarm system, but you know somebody walking up to your porch when the light goes on. Okay, and those things are pretty cheap too. Uh, um, none of us are probably living in a college dorm right now, all right? But we might have kids or even grandkids that are. So college campuses are a dangerous place. Not only do we have horny boys, and I'm just going to be honest about it, not only do we have horny boys on campus, but we have guys that are off campus that want to go and take advantage of the girls that are on campus. All right. So if you have a daughter, it's of college years, you know, not alone is an app she can have. You should have her put it on her phone. OK. All right. And in this in this uh, depiction right here, this is a gal walking down the sidewalk. All right. She's got her hoodie up. She's got her hands in her pocket. Bad, bad. And that's another class. We, ha it's, it's, we, we will talk about situational awareness. What's going on around you, passive and active? That's a whole class. As you walk down a sidewalk, no matter where you are, whether it's here or Las Vegas or New York, or it doesn't matter where, 
But the principles are the same. And that's why she got attacked, by the way, because she's not paying attention. This guy came out of this car, sla is slashing her face. That's what he's doing. Okay, the you know the the game where you, where youth would jump you know would walk up to you and punch you, knock you out. Well, that's gone up a step. Now it's slashing you. Okay, so so one of the things you want to do if you're out in public is your head is on a swivel, not to the point where you're paranoid, or but where your head's moving, you're aware, you maintain a safe zone around you. You don't you know put that hood up. And, and you know you don't walk like this because I guarantee you'll be targeted. What? With your earphones. With your on. right, with your right, yeah, and, and playing with your electronics. Okay, you're just looking to get attacked. All right. So campuses, you know, nowadays since there's been so many, this actually started at, at the uh, University of Florida was the first one because of anyway Bundy, but. So a lot, almost all the campuses now have these emergency phones and lighting systems. So you run up to it, you push the button, and immediately um, it's, um, it goes to the campus police department. Normally, that's who's, gonna, you know, that's who's answering the other end. And then there's a light that goes off, and if you hit the panic, it flashes to get people's attention. And they'll have these things on campuses. So if, again, if you have a young lady... Well, even a young man that's in school, he should understand, know what these are and how to use them. This is the door wedge that I was talking about that I like. All right, so students, you, you know, it's don't invite people into your room that you don't know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, campuses are one of the most highly regulated places, all right? Uh, there's, they have to report on the number of rapes and other crimes on that campus on a yearly basis. But I'll tell you right now, they're not the best about doing that. Now, here's why. Because the way this campus defines rape and the way this one defines rape is different versus, you know, burglary versus... So it's not apples to apples. It's apples to oranges. All right? Well, if it gets reported at all. It, well, if, right. And if they don't report it, then, you know, they're, they're subject to all well, kinds of fines. They don't get it. Right, right. Okay, if the student yeah. doesn't report it. Right. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, the vast majority of... Sexual incidents on a campus are not reported at all. It's hard to do enrollment when you cut the worst campus. Well, right. That's one of the things that, you know, when my daughter goes to school, it's one of the things that I look at when the kid goes to school is how safe is that campus. Yeah. It's part of the game. And UNLV is not on the list. Okay. And then REMS, uh, this is one of those things that helps campuses they can it's a uh, to be more secure there's federal programs out there to help them all right parking lots let's just talk real quickly about those uh you know parking lots you're going to want to stay in the middle you don't want to walk in the shadows um it's, uh, it's uh you guys can look you'll be able to go online and look at these so that i'm trying to speed up just a little bit privacy film and security film we talked about those already i i would if it was me was your, you know, if I lived in your home, yes, that's what I would do. I would have the bulletproof film on the inside. I'd have the privacy film on the outside. And uh, my wife carries one of these too, by the way. And that's right. TSA won't let you take it on a plane. They, you know, okay, now you got to put it in your carry-on. But, and they won't let you take this on a plane either. Okay, that's got to go, I mean, uh, in your uh, check baggage. Okay. And uh, you know, I hate the TSA, but for a lot of reasons. Um, and this is, you know, this is actually, you might, you know, the air handlers for the uh, air conditioning system to, say, to prevent anybody, just anybody having access to them. Okay, but, because I'm paranoid. All right. Oh, always have, always have that flashlight with you. Just always have one. And if you look at the shape of this thing too, by the way, you know, this, you know, it's, it's got some defensive in addition to providing a nice light, it's got some other defensive uses as well. So that's why I carry that particular model. Uh, the use of deadly force. Let's just talk a little bit about this because there's folks that talk about this. Is all they do is, is, is the use of deadly force and they teach you how to carry a concealed firearm. And so I don't want to steal anybody's thunder, so to speak. But so uh, Utah, we're actually pretty good on our self-defense laws. As in, we have a castle doctrine. As in, if somebody breaks into my house, okay, I can defend myself. 
which is not the case in other states. And you talked about Minnesota a few minutes ago. Let me use that as an, 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 as an, an analogy. Okay, so Minnesota, you break into my house. I can tell you to get out. You, you come into my house, you pick up my TV, you're going out the door. Can I shoot you? No, not in Minnesota. Why? One, they're just taking personal property. You know? Right, yeah. So if they're taking property, okay, I have to let him take my stuff, okay? From a, I know it sounds asinine, but I have to be in fear for my life or, you know, or our family members, but I have to be in fear for my life in order to shoot that person, okay? And if they're retreating, no, you don't get to shoot them anyway, okay? So, versus Texas. Texas, if you break the threshold, as in you, somebody goes through the window, burglar goes through the window, the homeowner gets to assume that they mean bodily harm and they get to defend themselves, okay? What you don't get to do, even in Texas, is once that guy goes outside your house and he's off your property, he's running down the street and running away, you don't get to shoot him in the back. Unless, okay, and I don't want to, you know, with all the legal stuff, but right now there's a case that's just like this. And the guy is saying that the guy who was running away said, I'll be back. I'm coming back. I'm going to get my brother and we'll be back. Okay, so now he gets to explain all that in court. But my suggestion to you, if he's running away, let him go. But hopefully your camera got him on. You got his picture and you have a description. And, and in my case, you know, we'll have to get that big chunk of his butt back to him that Apollo took out of him. But All right. So if all else fails and you have to defend yourself, okay, we have a plan in my house. I mentioned it a little while ago. So in this case, you know, do you want to close the door where you can't see the attacker? Where you can't see him? Or do you want to leave that door open where well, you can? That's your decision to make. So if you have a camera out there where you can watch what he's doing out in the hall from your safe room, then I would do that. But she's got the child behind her in a protective position. She's got some cover, okay? So there's st there are some, several things that this lady's doing right, okay? Well, she's got her elbow locked. You don't want to do that. But, but there's, there's several things that she's doing right. But here's the thing, if you shoot somebody, even in your house, even if you're right, even if there's a knife to your throat, expect to be sued. If you shoot somebody in your house, call your lawyer. As soon as this thing gets calmed down, call your lawyer, okay? Seriously. Okay, so you have to express, oh, I was in fear for my life. Okay, how, how can you, okay, that's why, did you, I was so upset, I was puking. Okay? I was so scared, I wet myself. Okay? If you, you can express that to law enforcement when they're there, they're going to believe that you were in fear for your life. If you just say, guy broke in, he's getting my TV, blasted his head off, you'll be in trouble. All right. So, you need, to, you need to think, you know, are you ready to take somebody's life in order to defend your home? Okay? I, I can tell you, my wife... My wife would shoot somebody to protect our kids, okay? I'm not even, you know, but you have to ask yourself that question if you really could do that. And if you can do that, then get the training, all right? But the big thing you want to do, too, is delay Let the, so that the police have time to respond, to get to your home. Well, you might want to call your neighbor if they're closer, like, well, you know, up there in Burrow. Well, I got one friend that she'll call me, and then she calls 911 because I can get to her house faster than anybody else. Have a plan. How you're going to evade intruders, or if they break in, maybe you let them have the house, you go out the back door. All right? So, but have a plan. Just go through all these different things. And then if you have a safe room, you're going to want to have a thing we call a fatal funnel. Okay? Where there is, it's a hall that they go down, where they, they are restricted in their movement, and all they're going to do is get killed. We call it a kill zone in the military, but it's the same thing. So this guy, he's got his ear protection on so that he can hear. He can hear when he pulls the trigger on that 12 gauge, he can still hear. Because if you're in a small room like this and you pull the trigger on a 12 gauge, you're going to, okay? So, and you can see, he, so he's got 911. He dialed 911. He is still connected, okay? He is still, he is talking to 911. And uh, if you were really anal retentive, you would have that camera angled so that it's you're filming the intruder coming in, but and then underneath 
the phone is he's got his other emergency backup flashlight. <coughs> so this is fairly well thought out. And you can see he's behind his bed. So he's got some cover. Scott, yes, sir. You also put yourself at risk if you film that and you're not sure when you pull that trigger. Because if you film it and they're empty handed or they are retreating if you're filming, uh, so, okay, so right. So, it, well, if you're going to violate the law, don't film it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but if you're doing everything you're supposed to and you have it on film, you can show the cops this is where he broke in. This is what he was doing. This is why. And then, so when if it, if it does go to court, you have the evidence so it can get dismissed, okay, with prejudice, as in the judge doesn't like the other side. Okay. All right. And then, if, if this happens, you are going to want to stay in the safe room. Let the police clear your house, okay? All right, so if you ever have talked to anybody coming back from Krapistan or, or, or Iraq, any of the guys coming back, they're going to tell you the, la the thing that they like the least is clearing houses, okay? Because the adrenaline's pumping every door you go through, you know, every corner you go around, all right? And they practice, and you know, we, and we have guys in a stack and body armor and yada yada yada. Okay, you aren't experts in that, so don't try to clear a house. You don't have the right equipment. Don't just stay in your safe room. Let the police clear your house. When you're talking to the police, and we'll talk a little bit about 911 calls in just a second. Uh, you let them know where you are, that you're the homeowner, I'm in the bedroom, I'm armed, and I have fired a shot or two shots or three shots, whatever. But the more the police know, the better off you're going to be. Okay, so yeah, there's the mace, that's a, a mace ball bat. It's not my wife's, because my wife's is actually like sharper than that. But okay, so my personal home defense plan I got the, the, the layers, I've got the dog, dogs, actually two. Uh, crunching gravel around the house, so anybody walking up, I, I would hear it. The dog would hear it too. Um, and then you would hear me rack the 12 gauge. And if that's not enough to send you packing, I, I've got, I've got a, a pistol, which is my normal carry pistol, with a green laser. I like green lasers better. I think I can, I can see it better versus red, but it's a personal preference thing. I showed you my laser, I showed you my mirror. I so. That typical, you know, that, that laser and the mirror, they're sitting on my nightstand next to my, next to my Glock. And my, and my wife's got her own. Okay, so my wife, her, while I'm doing the what's going on thing, she's going to get the kids into the bedroom, into the safe room, and she's going to dial 911 and stay on the phone. I'm going to send Apollo in to go see what's going on. Okay, A, he's a distraction to the burglar, and yada, yada, yada. And I can tell from the sounds that he makes what's going on. So... And then yeah, I mentioned that the wife is, is armed, and, and so is the kid, the, the kid that's at home right now. I know. Some people say, what, why would you arm your child? Well, she's been trained. She knows what to do. She's a crack shot. If you, a few months ago, Fox News out of Vegas came all the way up here because I gave a class on how to, how, to, how to stop or prevent a kidnapping. And we kidnapped the reporter, threw her in the trunk that fast. And then, and then, and I used to, that was a reporter. And then my daughter, we, we, she showed defensive techniques, and uh, I had to get off of her because she was kicking my behind, really, because really, I told her, you can do anything you want, you know what to do. And she went after me, and I did not want any more of those injuries. So, <laughs> um, and so, and she knows how and when to use a firearm. But if your kids don't, then, you know, that's so that's for you. All right, don't use a landline typically because. What if, what, if you rely on a landline, phone line, and the, and the burglars already cut that line, then you don't have communications. Deception, always lie. Don't let the burglar know where you, what you're doing, where you're going. You know, for example, you know, it's, Bob, get George and Fred and come down here. I think there's a burglar. You know, it's whatever you're going to do, but think about it in advance. Have that your S word, have a safe word. So the safe word means that we're okay, we can ratchet down, put the weapons on safe, okay? That's what that means. And then intruders. If it's a deliberate attack where this guy is really trying to get in, that's where I deploy my caltrops, I throw them down the stairs, and we have that fatal funnel. I use the laser as a dazzler. We have cover and concealment upstairs at the top of the stairs. And, uh, you know, anybody trying to go upstairs through caltrops, through a dog, into a 12-gauge, you know, it's, but we have a plan. 
and we practice it once a year because my family's fairly pro proficient because you can tell I'm anal retentive but all right so emergency uh, risk assessment you uh, there's we want to do it by our zip code uh, fire there's a thing called defensible 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 space we have a whole class on that earthquakes too which what are the risks of an earthquake what should I do uh, for example um, you know you know is your water heater is it strapped to the wall so in case of an earthquake is it you know is it going to fall over and become a missile or actually rocket missiles are guided but uh, you get the point so develop a plan you know if, if you have to bug out under what conditions would you leave and this is really an important thing and we in, in the bug out class we go into a, a, in a good bit of detail about this and we I, I want you to develop a matrix and what I mean by that is if this happens going down this column I do this okay so for example if the power goes out in Las Vegas for two weeks there's rioting and looting and people are leaving Las Vegas and are going into St. George then I'm going to do why okay so that's what that's what we're talking about so develop something like that because what happens is, is people will get into an emergency situation like Florida during a hurricane and they'll say well if it gets if the hurricane makes landfall I'll leave okay well the hurricane makes landfall okay well if the hurricane gets 20 miles away I'll go hurricane gets 20 miles away if the hurricane destroys the house next door then I'll go guess what yeah it's way too late for that okay so that's why you need to develop those criteria rally points this is where you're gonna get your family together after we got out of town this is where we're gonna meet or you know because if dad's at work or mom's at work and somebody's at home this is where we meet what route how do you get there and what do you take with you all right and we're still keeping our doors locked right okay this was my house in Vegas by the way and it's just as an example one of the things that I did was you see the rose bushes in front of them here in front of the window that's right spiky thorny things and then if I have to I, my plan I put I fill these trash cans with dirt and roll them up against the, the plywood and I, I, I left that gap on purpose so I can look out and then I have a hose just in case somebody throws a Molotov cocktail and normally the hose is on the other side of the wall too so you can't steal it but but this is part of my planning okay and Vegas is a lot different proposition than this place is okay all right so earthquake what do we need to do in an earthquake well one of the things you're going to want to do is turn off your gas okay and there's a rent and this is what you need to do to do that right here okay now there's a codicil to that and that is if you turned it off the gas company's got to come out and turn it back on okay but if you have if you smell gas if you have a leak I would much rather turn the gas off than have my house blown up you know but uh, so we do have and we'll talk about each of those things and then severe weather is one of the things that we do get here you know it can get hot it can get cold uh, this is a um, magnetic storm by the way does Utah get tornadoes yes, yes. yes. any state actually can get them we don't get very many of them but yeah we we do get them we've had what two up in Perum Perum per, right Panguage Panguage okay and when I lived in Stansbury Park outside outside of Salt Lake uh, we had one go down our drive went through our yard so severe weather oh uh, yeah and so a lot of this is just being prepared right now let me tell you you, you I know you laugh okay but and here's why it's funny all right, so this gal dressed entirely inappropriately for the weather, right? What? Where, where are you going dressed like that out here? Okay. In that car. In that car. <laughs> in that car. Right. Curve. <laughs> so, how many of us saw on the news a week or week a week or two weeks ago the family from Great Britain, Australia, wherever it was, that were trying to get to the North Rim, got stuck. He stayed with the car and the kids. She left to go get help. And she was rescued and you know she was in the hospital for frostbite right everybody see that okay well that's that's the whole you know not being ready we had a fatality last winter right the guy in the red van that uh, got stuck in the snow walked away from the van and it was months before uh, the uh, before Iron County search and rescue found his body anybody part of that search and rescue by the way okay 
That's another good thing for us to do, is to join those posses. I know, it's, he, 50 bucks says it's got California tags. All right, so this is, this is some of the stuff that Terry is going to talk about and demonstrate in our, in our class coming up. Okay, so different types of masks, the capabilities, limitations, this stuff, okay? This stuff is, this is a, it's a thick coating that you apply like paint. It dries clear, okay? You put on one coat, you let it dry, wait a couple days, put on another coat. That, that stuff will protect your home from fire to uh, 15 minutes at 3,000 degrees or 40 minutes at 2,000 degrees, okay? Depending on... But that stuff is gold, all right? It's only, it's a few hundred bucks. And if you're not gonna use all five gallons of it, you know, go in with a neighbor, you know? Uh, so fire guard, really good stuff. Do you put it inside or outside? On the outside of your house. That's a good question, yes. On the exterior, yep. So that, you know, if there's a wildfire to keep that, you know, from getting into your home. And this is the thing, you know, it's called defensible space. Don't have anything combustible next to the house, you know, against the house and all right, so I'm trying to go a little bit quicker because I'm, I'm, I'm going along today. So hazmat, all this has, hazardous material stuff, Terry is going to talk about. We're just to brush a little bit deeper, you always tell us about Interstate uh, 15 here. Yeah, I-15. Stuff that goes up. Yeah, that. if you knew, yeah, okay, that's a good point. Yeah, so there's all kinds of toxic or hazmat, haz, hazmat hazardous materials going up and, down, up and down I-15. It's a significant corridor. And yes, that even includes... There's some uh, um, uh, 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 radiolog radiological, uh, radioactive uh, garbage that, that, goes, that goes up and down the interstate, too. So uh, really what you want to do is get to the point where you can do this, where it's normal. In, in Israel, every home has got a gas mask, right? Several, actually. Every every, yeah. And in and, and the right size, okay? You got them, you, where, where, you, where are you are? Here's are out there. Here we have infant, okay. we have child, we have a civilian, and we have military. Yeah, okay, so if you're gonna put your mask on, put your mask on, then put the infants on, all right. But, but uh, so no matter the age or size, okay, and then you see the windows are sealed, and they do, the, they do a monthly exercise where they'll put that stuff on and keep it on for like an hour, all right. It doesn't do, you should get used to it. That's why it comes to you know, practice. You know, put it on so that you're comfortable doing it. Yes, Mark. Okay, so the time is now 12 noon, and our uh, shelter-in-place ballistic storm shelter has arrived, and we're ready, uh, we're just about ready to show it. So if you could kind of now wrap it up. Wrap it up, yep. and then we'll uh, look at the shelter. <coughs> All right, I will do that. Okay, so flooding and flash flooding. Uh, okay, there's the matrix that I was talking about. This is a sample. Okay, so based on what go what's going on in your area, uh, not, uh, and then resources. Okay, that was, this is the one that I want to get to. So we have links to a whole bunch of things that will help you. So let's go look at the ballistic shelter. Can I test it? You want to yeah. something into it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'll see marks on it. Yeah, no, I, lo I love that. 